Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Paint Desk Ramblings. So, it's been a while, I'll admit that. Um, and I thought that this episode will be a sort of a recap um, to what's been going on in my life and why it uh, hasn't been that many episodes lately, or haven't. It's been a re break since um, the start of summer, June. Um, so it's not going to be a Ninth Age heavy episode, I'll just talk about my um, my summer and why I haven't been doing uh, any, uh, that much content lately. And uh, yeah, of course I'll also ca catch up you with you on the um, Ninth Age news, so that will be Ninth Age related. And since it, it's been a while, uh, there's going to be quite a large segment there. Um, I do plan to get back to doing more of my uh, uh, regular content, but um, before doing that, I want to do make this episode to to, to catch you up on the situation. Um, yeah, but uh, before we get into all of that, let's start with the hobby spotlight. So I got this little guy here that you see. This is the Captain of the Guard from Shield Wolf Miniatures. I won this guy at a tournament maybe three years ago. Um, they had uh, they, they were sponsored by Shield Wolf and um, they made a random draw where people could uh, come up and uh, make a pick from I think it was uh, five different characters and. Um, I think I got the third pick or something like that, and this one was still there. And uh, I re really, really liked the sculpt, and I had my plans for an Empire Army back then, so I thought I'd pick him and uh, maybe use him someday. And uh, today's the day. So uh, it's a really nice sculpt and a nice resin cast. I did switch out the head though for a Games Workshop pistolers or outrider kit I don't know what it's called anymore um, <clears throat> so a different head to sort of give him give him that conquistador, conquistador feel um, I imagine him being from uh, Destra and uh, devoted to the church and all that so I'll be um, using him as an inquisitor in my Empire Sunshell army and also as an Inquisitor in my Inquisitor Warband in uh, Skirmish Campaigns. So that's what I'll be painting today. As usual, there's, there'll be a link down below to where you can find the model. And as usual, I would love to hear what you're painting if you're doing some work while listening to this. Uh, so I'll be slapping some, some paint around on this guy as I go along. <coughs> um, so yeah, let's move on to the news. Uh, and I realized I had the wrong screen up on the page, but whatever. Um, we go to this this photo, which is uh, unrelated to what I'm talking about now, but you will get a little explanation in a while. So, <coughs> what has happened in the Ninth Age since? Since uh, June, basically. So let's start with the Nine Scroll. There has been two issues released, number 22 and number 23. Um, 23 was under different management. Uh, Blonde Bear took over the, the uh, mantle. I think Henry wanted some uh, time off. Uh, for a vacation, I think. Not, uh, I, I haven't looked that into that that much. Um, but this scroll has a different look, and um, that's th still same quality content as far as I could tell. It looks nice. Um, both of them had a little bit of fluff in them, some bad reports. I know the the latest scroll twenty three had a lot of hobby content, so some tutorials and things like that. Um, 
so I encourage you to check those out if you're interested to get some tips and some inspiration perhaps they also had some nice battle reports and uh, yeah overall good content as usual Okay, for some reason my headset shut off, shut off. Uh, but I don't think you missed anything too important. Um, moving on from the scroll. Next piece of news we have is that the Night Age celebrated its 5th year anniversary. So they made a little news article that will be linked down below. Where they recap the, the year that has gone by and uh, things like that. We talk about COVID, of course, and the difficulties that that, that has caused for the project, and uh, but also they list some of the accomplishments that has been made uh, over the uh, um, the year, which is not in insignificant. Um, of course, the legendary legendary army books have been a bit delayed, but they have released some uh, other content, some su supplements. My personal favorite is, of course, the Giant Supplement, uh, which we'll talk a bit more about later in this section. But they also release, have released the Cultists and um, um, some other minor, minor stuff. So it's um, it's been a decent year, I think they surmised, despite everything. <clears throat> so that's nice. Um, they've released a second beta for the Infernal Dwarves, which changes a few thi things. Uh, it's a bit, bit of a balance patch to try and um, address some of the concerns of the community, the way I understand it. Um, they were viewed as Maybe, maybe a bit too powerful, the Infernal Dwarves. So this brings them down a bit. So some <coughs> quick highlights. This was a while ago, so I'm sure most, most of you are familiar with it already, but I want, wanted to touch on, on a few things and share my thoughts. They removed the 360 degrees line of sight from the Infernal Bastion, which sounds like a good idea. That was a bit of a we weird rule, if you ask me. They also removed the, or changed the uh, Whispers of the Mask rule or equipment on the Immortals. It no longer uh, sets your best wound roll to four, 4 up, it's instead minus 1 to wound on strength 4 or higher, which I think translates into you can't wound them on 3 up or better. Um, which is a nerf, but it's still a good rule. So, uh, I, I would think I would have preferred that they had removed parry from them and kept the rule as it is. But um, still, it's a cool unit. They replaced uh, magma tunneling or magmatic tunneling, or whatever it was called, with goats, ghost step, which sort of does the th same thing, it allows you to move through stuff, but <coughs> I think that the ghost step is more limited. Uh, you can charge using it, which I don't think you could before, but you can't mo move through units, so they can be shaft still. Uh, so it's a simplification, and I guess that's good. And then there was a lot of point changes. Oh, and the uh, the uh, infernal engine it lost parry when it has the rock crusher. It always has uh, defensive skill three now, and it gained uh, uh, fires of industry two, even when it's uh, in the rock crusher mode. So th I think that's good. It's uh, it's a nasty piece. Though a lot of people I know 
were a bit upset with the parry rule that he ha had before. Didn't, they didn't think, thought it made sense. That was never an issue for me. I always just saw it as it being just a big rock crusher thing, so like big swirly bits and all of that. And you, it, I imagine that's a bit difficult to land a blow on. Um, because it's, yeah, lots of swirly bits, whatever. But, uh, yeah, it's an a change I think uh, overall it's for the best and um, I look for forward to fighting against them someday it, they haven't had a chance to do that yet so maybe I'll change my, my com mind completely and I think they are horribly overpowered once I do but um, that's a sorrow for tomorrow so moving on <coughs> Um, the Giants, as I said, were released this year, and quite recently they also got a both a second beta release and a hotfix on that beta. The hotfix was just some minor changes, and the second edition did the uh, really nice change of adding uh, an additional option for all of the existing Giants. So the Oxen Goblin Giant, the uh, uh, Marauding Giant, the Beast Giant, and all of those got one more weapons option. Which is really nice, because now the document has something for everyone, everybody. Um, so very, very good change there. The options for the Oxen Goblins, which, which is the only one that really affected me, uh, the Belly Flop, and not that fond of that that rule. Um, the <laughs> the Oxy Goblin Giant has a bit of a problem with already one of its up upgrades, the uh, Whirling Chains of Doom, no, Wrecking Ball. It's called. Um, it sort of nullified the other benefits of the Oxy Goblin Giant, so it couldn't use the Born to Fight rule and couldn't use. Um, Warcry, and this belly flop has the same same problem. It doesn't benefit from a born to fight, um, which is a shame. Uh, you don't want that kind of an anti synergy in a single model. But um, whatever, it's a nice upgrade. I think the coolest upgrade is the the favor giant that the marau marauding giant can take. So he takes uh, the pact and uh, becomes a warrior, which is <laughs> really badass. I'm not sure if it's good, but uh, I don't care, it's cool. If I ever do get around to making myself an um, warrior of the Dark Gods army, I'm pretty sure I will have to include one of those. Um, other changes into the Irons, there were some balancing to the uh, to the um, shooting weapons, the various armies. So the um, Imperial Giant um, had some changes done to its weapon. It is no longer just yes, a straight up hell. Um, it's no longer straight up a uh, Volagon. Um, that they can feel as a war machine, but it is instead, I think it's extra high armor penetration, uh, strength 4 only, but AP 3, so it shred shreds armor, and uh, hits fairly well. So I think they, they struck a nice balance, uh, it was a bit too powerful before, and it didn't count against uh, the Imperial Armory category, which I think it does now. So, uh, yeah, I think that's a good change. It's a nerf, but I will definitely still include one one in my army because it's so cool. Also, the other some other shooting op options got changed. The um, both the Hibern Elves and the Sylvan Elves, I think, had a bow option. And both of those were changed from being a sort of bolt thrower weapon to more of a Volagon weapon. 
which I guess is easier to balance, though I think it's a bit boring. But that's just me. Um, yeah, so that's the giants. Happy to see them taking care of their supplements, especially the giants. As some of you probably know, I'm a big fan of that. Big fan of the big boys. And uh, I guess I can mention in, in related news that Games Workshop just recently put out pre-order for their Sons of Behemoth. So those are some really big boys, ex excellent use for big brother giants, uh, though they were quite expensive. Um, but yeah, if you want some nice looking giants, I can recommend those. I will probably get myself one of those, or two, we'll see. Um, moving on from the giants, <coughs> they announced the sixth uh, legendary army book that will be released, and that's the Kingdom of e Kingdom of Equitane. So we're all really excited to, for that, but of course it's going to be a few years before we get to that that point. But still, it's nice to see, and it uh, I think it's good to announce this early because you can build some hype and all of that. Although maybe it's too early and you. <laughs> you manage to lose the hype before you actually release the book. I don't know. But it's nice, nice to see. I think I talked with uh, Grimbold uh, Blackhammer on a recent episode. Recent <laughs> is a relative term, I guess. But um, an episode that I did not long before the hiatus uh, about some speculations for the next book. And I'm fairly sure that I uh, put up uh, Kingdom of Equ Equitain as a likely candidate, and uh, I was proven right, and I'm happy to, for that. Um, I think they deserve a book. It's nice to see that they are doing one of the traditionally good armies. Um, up until now it's only been the tradi traditionally evil armies, although the uh, Night Age doesn't really categorize armies that way. Um, and um, yeah, I, I look forward to it. I, I'm especially curious about the background. It's uh, given the the way that Night Age writes their background with a an unreliable na narrator. I think the background can be really nice for this one because it's the, it will be easier for them to use um, first person experiences. Uh, because the King of Equity themselves ri probably write a lot. We already know quite a lot from other narrators who are from that kingdom. Um, I'm not sure if they, their main narrator should be from the King of Equity. I think it's good to get an out outside perspective, but it should be easy enough to add some some um, insider perspectives, which can be tricky with some of the armies, um, like the, the Demon Legions especially. Uh, they had really had to struggle with that because the demons themselves don't really write stuff down. It seems um, maybe th there were some perhaps that uh, were possessed, possessing hu humans or other beings that uh, did some writing. But overall, it's uh, you don't, can't get that many sources. Same trouble that they, they, that we've seen in um, the background compendium snippets in the in the scroll. Um, you don't get uh, that much in, in terms of first uh, pers first uh, perspective on things like orcs and goblins and beast herds and stuff. It's always their foes that write about them, which is fine. But um, I think they can uh, explore that more with uh, King of Equitain. So looking forward to that. And of course, I, I'm happy for them because um, they get a new book, and that's always cool. It's an army that's a bit tricky. I've seen a lot of discussion on the forums because uh, it's a bit torn of whether whether to <laughs> they want to add stuff or not. The army is just medieval knights, basically, and peasants. So there's not that much you can add without starting to. 
infringe on the theme people th think. So some people want to add more fantasy elements like some hippogriff knights or spirits or magical stuff, unicorns, strange beasts and all of that. And some people just want it to be knights. Um, personally, I think they should add stuff. If you don't want to include that in your army, then fine, don't include it in your army. But um, I would ha rather see more variety in uh, every every army than uh, just keeping the status quo. So that's my take on it. Um, I would say put your co uh, own comments in the uh, own thoughts in the comments, but uh, I'm not sure I want this video to turn into a rage fest about King of Equitain, so maybe don't do that. Uh, not that I think it's that big a risk, but whatever. <clears throat> okay, moving on. Um, internal balance survey. This was announced a few weeks ago, I think, start of October. So they are doing surveys in Google Forms for every army that you can fill out and let the project know what units you think are overpowered and what units you think are underpowered. And of course the forums forums are ablaze with people who don't like this. <laughs> um, and they have sort of a point, but yeah. So the the, the project are trying to uh, to figure out what people think are overpowered and underpowered and they can use the data uh, from tournaments to try and determine this but they also want some feedback and I think that's good the more feedback you gather the better it is there is of course a limit to what how much you can consider and all of that but it's an it's a good thing in the end um, but maybe it could have been done better. I know that some of the options are missing from a few of the armies. So I think mount options are not included in, in any army. Which is a bit sad because I think some of the worst offenders in underpoweredness at least are in the mount options. So things like the monstrous revenant are never seen in the Maverick Covenant. The Vibern overall, I think, is a bit underpowered in the Oxen Goblins and things like that. Uh, and also, you can't really put in, um, in, in input the, the variety because, uh, like the uh, Zombie Dragon in uh, Vampire, Vampire Covenant, is not a good option either, but it's decent. In certain builds, in certain bloodlines, especially. So, if you could give more nuanced, nuanced um, responses, maybe that would be better. But the more complex you make it, the more complex it is to analyze it and all of that. So, maybe keep it simple is the best answer. Something they did mess up a bit on, though, were the terms overpowered and underpowered. Because this is an, it's an internal balance survey, and a lot of people are hung up on that in different ways. So they, they want to know what what units are good in the army and what units are bad in the army. Not how good they are relative to other armies. And for a lot of people that's, that is a bit tricky to... Um, this tangle, this uh, discard, um, and I think they could have been a, done a better job of like, explaining that, what they were after. So, uh, like a lot, a lot of people th just think that my army is underpowered overall, so there are no um, overpowered entries in my book, and I can feel <laughs> with that when I did the surveys for my armies 
I did struggle a bit to, to figure out what I thought was overpowered because it's it's not something that you really want to do because you're oh, oh, you're afraid then that they are going to nerf those picks that you make. But if the truth is that your army is underpowered, then that's not necessarily the case. It just means that um, they are not the things that will get buffed, but they won't necessarily get nerfed. And yeah, stuff like that. It's <coughs> it's a bit tricky. Okay, this looks like a pajamas. Hmm. I think it. I think it will work. So, uh, you can still fill uh, fill these out. So if you haven't already, go check that out. Um, as I said, more data is always good. The more responses they get on this, the better the data. So if you haven't done so already, go check them out. The link will be down below. Um, then the last piece of Night Age pure news from the project itself um, is uh, an errata update and I haven't looked at it. Frankly, I'm a bit bored by the errata updates. I know I should have looked at it, <coughs> but I couldn't be, be bothered. Um, it's good that you do these and each of them clears up the rules up a little bit more. But my personal opinion is that they are so deep down in nitty gritty rules detail that it's hardly ever matters the things that they do clarify in these. But of course, when they do pop up, you are happy to to be able to find an answer in the, these documents, if you can remember that they exist. So, uh, it's good that they, they are keeping them updated. So, that's it for the Ninth Age project rules. We'll move on to a few miniature rules as well. Miniature news, did I say rules? don't know. <clears throat> because, of course, in the time I've been gone, there's been a lot of miniature releases, and I won't pretend to go through them all. Um, in preparation for this episode, I had a little look through, see what I could find, and I picked out picked out some of my uh, what I thought were highlights. Um, so I want I want to start off with talking about 3D printing. Because this is a market that seems to have exploded. There are a lot of different companies that produce um, STL files and um, sell them. And for some reason, a lot of them have chosen to uh, use <coughs> uh, Patreon to uh, sell their stuff, which I can't really understand why. Um, but whatever, um, it's, uh, you, you pay a monthly fee and then you get access to a whole bunch of miniature every month, the style files that you can print. And personally, I don't really want that for purchasing, purchasing miniatures. I want to scroll through a big list of stuff and see what I like and pick those out and pay for those. Um, but getting a whole bunch of stuff every month that you don't really know what to do with, I don't know, it feels weird. And I really wonder what happens to the, the release stuff every month, and if you see something you like from six months ago, can you access that? I don't know. It seems weird to me. Uh, if someone understands how it works, please explain in the comments. Um, because it is something I'm actually getting into. I do have access to a really, really nice 3D printer now. Um, so I might have to dig into this and see what's available. Um, but whatever. So, as I said, it's been an explosion of, of uh, companies that do this. 
and I've seen that the um, miniature page on the Nitrate site do um, summarize them a bit. If you look at your an army, there is often a, li a list of um, companies that do uh, miniatures for that army. Um, do, uh, 3D, 3, that sell 3D models for the, for that arm, army. So I think that's a good resource if you're looking for some 3D printing models. Um, yes. Moving on, now we have to switch to some pictures. <coughs> so Redline Miniatures. This was a, a release that I thought was really cool. They have released some Lynx Riders. So these are Elven cavalry on uh, big cats, uh, which is always a cool concept, and these miniatures look quite nice. I like the red line miniatures because they are they look very feral. I think these would make excellent um, wild huntsmen, for example. Uh, I really like the way they are mounted as well with this. Um, they see, they see crouched on the cat. So yeah, I, I like these miniatures. And <laughs> uh, I want to mention that the the you can get a quite big selection of different cat mounted elves nowadays. Between these, the Mantic uh, Basilium Panther Riders girls. Not sure what they called, um, and then also the Shield Wolf miniatures um, have some. Uh, I think it's Telarium humans that are also mo mounted on cats, big cats. Those that, those are like large cavalry. Between those, you have quite a nice selection of different cat mount cat mounted elves. So maybe there's a cool army somewhere there. Um, not really sure. How exactly? Maybe Empire could make use of all all the different kinds. Hmm. Empire of Sonstad at this. <coughs> so I don't know, but if you're interested, you can check those out. Um, certainly do check these main these uh, cat ri links riders out because they were really cool. Uh, yep. Yeah. Next we have uh, a Kickstarter from Norba Miniatures. Uh, let's scroll to the top. Um, it was funded in 40 seconds, which is a bit silly. I'm not too fond of companies that don't really need to make Kickstarters when they make Kickstarters. And if you're funded funded in 40 seconds, you probably didn't need a Kickstarter. Um, but I get why the companies are doing it. It's really good advertising and build hype and all of that. Um, and uh, this looks like a nice Kickstarter. Uh, there are seven days left, by the way, a week. So if you want in on it, you can still, still can. Um, <coughs> but they are doing CAV, CAV models for a lot of different armies. There are some suitable for Empire of Sonstal, uh, King of Equitain, uh, Vampire Covenant, and some uh, winged hussars that maybe could go in a Emperor of Sonshal army or you could do, use them in homebrew for um, various things. So th these are looking really cool. Uh, you can s I scroll through, you can see some of the different models here. One model that I want to highlight, I'll see. Uh, moving down, here's the winged hussars, they look neat. Uh, some pistolers. Here we are. The uh, mounted pilgrims. Pilgrims. I think that's a spelling error. Uh, but whatever. They have a bagpipe. Their musician is using a bagpipe on a horse, and that's awesome. I love that. Um, I, I'm a sucker, sucker for weird musical instruments for the musician, and um, this one looks really neat. I will have a bagpipe in my Empire Social Army soon enough. Um, 
but uh, yeah, I really, really, really like that, that one. So if you're interested in some bagpiping action, go check this Kickstarter out. Um, that's all I can say. So yeah, <clears throat> that's gonna do it for that. Moving on, we have uh, Avatars of War. And they have been busy, really busy, actually. So I think it's seven. It turned off again, I don't know why. <clears throat> this is uh, some really high quality stuff you're getting back, back into. Coughing all over the place and the headset is turning off mid recording. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> By the way, my coughing is due to me talking really bad. Whenever I do recordings alone, I do something with my voice that is not good for it, and uh, I get a sore throat and start coughing, which is horrible. Um, but whatever, I don't have corona, don't worry. Um, where was I? Yeah, Avatar's War. They have released a bunch of new models. So. <clears throat> uh, the first of which is this guy, a Marauder Warlord, so excellent for Barbarian Chieftain. Uh, cool dude, really, really detailed. Um, so if you're into that, good for you. Um, but yeah, it's, it, lo it looks neat. And we have the Imperial Hydromancer. Again, the uh, Avatar's Award stuff is quite highly de detailed. But I, I painted, painted a few of the models, and they are nice. Um, this one looks cool. Not sure what I would use that as, but I guess a wizard in the Empire Zone Shell is always an option. If I ever want a Hydro Monster, I get to get play that, that that as a Pyro Monster Wizard. No one would object, I think. Need to thin this down more. Uh, so that's a neat model. Next we have some Infernal Dwarves. This is this is their Vizier. Um, so pretty cool looking model. Nice axe. They also have a prophet with the uh, dual flames. <coughs> also a neat neat look looking model. So if you're looking for some reinforcements to the this new legendary army book. I guess it's not legendary yet. Um, then check this out. Next we have an Ogre Berserker. Which kind of has a Seeker look to it. So I would love to see someone using it as a filler in a Seeker unit perhaps. Um, that would be neat. I know a friend of mine is go probably going to get it to use as a an ogre bodyguard in a seeker warband in skirmish war uh, skirmish campaigns. So that's neat. Uh, really like this model. It looks cool. Although the uh, mohawk that he has, it goes a bit too far down his forehead. It looks like his it's part of his eyebrows almost. I don't know what's going on on there, but whatever. Uh, one more miniatures that they have released is a King Priest, and this is really new, I think. Um, <coughs> I like the look of this one. Really cool pose and cool pet. Um, so if you're looking for a cool King Priest, this is a good place to look. And um, I think that's gonna do it for news. So yeah, um, that's it. We're only, let's see, 40 minutes in. And we'll move on to the main segment. And uh, if you're only here for the Ninth Age content, you can safely turn it off, I think. Um, this is gonna be a bit more personal about me, but I, I, I wanted to do this. Um, and it's up to you to decide if you're interested or not, not in it. So, um, what have I been doing? 
since the last episode. So it was start of summer then, and I, I think I mentioned, maybe I didn't, um, going on a little vacation. So me and a friend, we uh, bought a tandem bike and um, pedaled it up to the northern parts of Sweden um, from Stockholm. So it was a 900 kilometers journey. And that's, <coughs> I, I, think, I think, 560 miles, if that's your preferred unit. Um, took us 14 days, and it was a lot of fun. The pictures you see, the picture you see on the screen is from that trip. Uh, it's a little lake that we camped next to uh, one of the nights. Um, we had a tent with us, so we slept in the wilderness most of the time. Took into um, not a hotel, a uh, hostel, I think it's called in English, uh, one night. And uh, yeah, different stuff. It was a good time. We uh, got to saw a lot of <laughs> a lot of the smaller roads of Sweden, and. Uh, a good experience, so that was nice. Um, don't think I will do that exact thing again, but I have done a few sim similar things before, and will probably do something a bit similar again. So uh, we paddled up to the northern parts of Sweden, where I have, I have some relatives, and spent two weeks there um, for some vacation. Um, Spent the most of the time digging holes in the ground. Um, that sounds weird, but I, I, I enjoy doing that. I, my day job is mostly just sitting still and doing nothing, and so is my hobby. So I like doing manual labor for a change, uh, and that's what I did for two weeks, um, basically. We also ate nice food and um, so socialized, I guess. All the while, uh, hunkering down, scared of, scared of Corona. But we had a good time. Um, I spent most of my summers up there. Um, so yeah, that's about it, about the trip. I got back, um, and um, yeah, I got back to the hobby. I've been painting quite a lot, and I've also been uh, playing Ninth Age. Um, first games since March have been had. Um, if you follow my YouTube channel, you'll, uh, you might have noticed that I've been doing some battle reports. Um, because there are no tournaments going on, so I decided to, to do battle reports of every game I play, instead of focusing on the tournament reports. And I do both skirmish and uh, fantasy battles, which I find uh, I, I find it quite enjoyable doing. Actually, I think I will continue with that even if I do get back to tournaments, if I have the time. Of course, it's always a, always a matter of time. Um, but it's my, it might be, might be something I I will prioritize a bit more than I had before. Uh, so that's nice. Um, I've also been painting a lot, as I said. Um, I finished up the giant I was working on shortly before leaving. Painted up 20 red arms, and I painted up an Iron Oak Warlord and a Bale Serpent and three other models for my uh, Inquisitor Warband. So, as always, it's not as much as I <coughs> as I would like. I think that applies to each and every one of us. Uh, you always want more. But I ha am working on, on this guy at the moment, and also I have a few other project projects lined up. Hopefully I will be able to finish something pretty big this weekend. We'll see. Um, but yeah, that's <coughs> what I've been up to painting-wise. Um, so, about 
the channel and the, the paint desk rumblings. As I said, said in the intro, I do intend to, intend to get back into it. Um, when I got back from the vacation, of course I, I wasn't doing anything like that during the vacation. I don't bring paint stuff with me on the bike. Um, but when I got back, I, I sort of really enjoyed the break. I don't know. It's doing these episodes no matter what I wish were the case, it is quite a lot of work. And I just sort of enjoyed spending that time and energy on on painting instead. Um, it's the simple tru truth of it. Um, I do still like doing this. Uh, I get to talk to pe people, engage with the community, and all of that nice stuff. Um, but it is time co time consuming. Um, even though I, I have the setup where I can paint at the same time I do have to prepare for it. I write a little manuscript and all of that. Um, and then editing afterwards, especially if I keep cough coughing and all of that into the microphone, so I have to edit that out. Um, that's really stupid of me. Should stop doing that. Um, but yeah, it's, it is what it is. Also my computer <coughs> sort of broke down. It, um, I was still able to, able to do, the, do the battle reports, no problem, or a little bit a problem. It's a, a very old computer and it's starting to show, but it's internet connection started to mess up. So I couldn't get a stable internet con connection. It li it's like a curve every now and then it, it stops working and I couldn't possibly have guests over um, and, and do via link some <coughs> hangouts or zoom or whatever um, because mid call I, I would uh, pop out uh, so that wouldn't work uh, so that was <laughs> I used that as an, as an excuse I guess not to um, do any more episodes, but really all I, all I had to do with was get another computer, and I have another computer. I have I, I'm on my uh, I'm on a different computer now um, that I had available, and it works well enough. Um, but I was lazy, and I used that uh, as an excuse uh, not to do anything. And um, yeah. It is what it is. Um, so this is another another purpose of this episode is sort of a test, um, make sure I have everything up and running as I want to before doing a proper episode with guests and everything, which I do have planned. So hopefully in the coming few weeks there will be another episode out with some company, which is always better in my opinion. I think you prefer it too. Um, so yeah, that's um, <coughs> the plan. Uh, hopefully I'll get, I will be able to get back into it and do some far fairly reg regular stuff. Um, I will try to get back into the um, schedule I had of doing um, an episode every two weeks. Um, might be that it will be more that like every three weeks or something like that, but better than waiting three months between every episode at least. So, yeah. Um, hopefully, just two weeks until next episode at least. But, <coughs> but I won't make any promises. Um. So yeah, I think that's about all I have to say. Um, happy to be back, but um, I'm not surprised, <laughs> as I guess, about the break taking place. Um, it, it, it happened. 
and uh, we'll see how it goes in, in the future. <clears throat> so enough of that depressing talk. Super, super depressing. <laughs> um, whatever. Let's uh, catch up on how, how this guy is coming al along. I was a bit unsure about how to paint this guy. Um, and I'm not still not sure about this pattern, but I think it looks quite nice. It's a bit look it looks a bit like a <coughs> uh, like a pyjam pyjamas, but I think that's okay. Um, so I will take some pictures of him, and you can see him on the screen at the end. And um, yeah, I guess that's it. Um, do tell how it how uh, you uh, did with your painting if you were painting while, while listening to this. Always happy to read about that. Um, and I guess that's all that's left is say to, to say uh, thank you for listening. And I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. <laughs>